Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Inas Mushtaq, working as Assistant Professor, Department of Obs and Gaini, Aligarh Muslim University, India. I'm here to present the QI project which was undertaken by the department to decrease the rate of surgical site infection in the hospital. Our department was sensitized to the need for QI through Laksh Government of India Initiative for Labor Room in 2018. There were multiple problems that we were facing. We decided to take the project of decreasing the surgical site infection rate as infection is the leading cause of maternal mortality and morbidity also because there was high rate of infection in our hospital. The project was started in the Department of Obstetrics and Gyne. The baseline data was collected by randomly checking the patients for signs and symptoms of surgical site infection on Mondays for a period of one month. And we found out that the rate of surgical site infection was roughly around 30%, which was quite high. We aimed to achieve a reduction in the surgical site infection rate from 30% to less than 5%. A team was formed under the able guidance and leadership of Professor Tamkeen Khan, who is the professor and chairperson, Department of Obs and Gyne. It was a multidisciplinary team comprising of obstetrician gynecologists, hospital infection control team, microbiologists, pediatrician, staff nurses, MTS workers, and cleaners. The data was analyzed by the QIT. The fishbone analysis was done and it was found that there were problems at multiple levels. There was no standard antibiotic policy, no safety checklists were there. The residents and staff were overburdened because of too many patients, but more importantly, there was lack of knowledge and specific training of the staff, which often led to breach in universal infection prevention measures. There was no standard SOP for the patient flow. There was also problem in the OT, like one entry and one exit, no proper flow of biomedical waste. The scrub sink in OT was elbow operated. A problem flow chart was made to address to these problems and work out their possible solution. After declaring the patient for cesarean section, it was seen that too many random people would be involved in shifting the patient to OT, which led to increased OT traffic. To address this problem, it was decided to assign the responsibility of shifting the patient to JR1, an MTS worker on duty. Next, it was seen that the instrument tray was kept open for a long time, sometimes for even an hour. To avoid this from happening, a record would be made for the time between the opening of the set and the start of the surgery, and the OT technician would ensure that the tray was not kept open for a long period of time. As we all know that the antibiotic prophylaxis within one hour of surgery has been associated with significant decrease in the rate of infection. This was the major problem that we were facing as there was no standard antibiotic policy, no surgical safety checklist, and no one was allotted the responsibility of giving the antibiotic. The obstetrician would presume that the anesthetist would give and vice versa, which often led to skipping the dose. And finally, there was no standard OT sterilization procedure. The tools for measurement were prepared and we came with a first PDSA cycle, wherein the SSI was defined as wound infection or persistent fever of over 100 degrees for more than 48 hours. The antibiotic policy was formulated, the surgical safety checklists were implemented, there was strict implementation of policies and comprehensive training, monitoring, designation and distribution of work. We reviewed our data timely, and after our first cycle, we found that initially, although the rates of infection were decreasing, but in the month four, again, we saw that the rates of infection were increasing. This is because many patients with fever from other causes like dengue and malaria were incorrectly diagnosed as having SSI. So the second PDSA cycle was made, wherein the definition of SSI was restricted to wound infection and the plan was adopted. The results are quite satisfying and we are still continuing with the project. Persistently, the rates of infection are around 5%. No plan is the best plan unless implemented and tested. Teamwork and multidisciplinary approaches required. Meticulous record keeping can be maintained. Thank you.